I'm driving through the desert uh, and there's some really striking scenery on the way. Um, quite a nice drive. More really cool scenery. Good morning. I'm on my way to uh, the Grand Canyon. I've stopped in the little town of Cayente in Arizona. Yeah, this is a Navajo Indian land, and they got a really cool exhibit here. This. Uh, is a rec recreated hut that people lived in. This is the, from uh, Mesa Verde. We saw these huts with the wooden roofs, etc. And uh, this is an example of that uh, with small variations from when the people moved out to uh, out of the Mesa. This basically is a little sauna you can probably seat three fourths maybe more people in there and basically they would heat rocks on a fire outside move them inside and pour water on it and the, the entryway would be sealed and that was what was used as a bath there's another variation on the uh, Navajo hut I think it's called a Hogan uh, fireplace in the middle, very basic. I imagine they would sleep on sheepskins, whatever, around the side. Just next to this museum or display is a Burger King, which has an interesting display inside, but I'm not allowed to film there. In World War II, the Marines, US Marines, recruited Navajo code talkers. They trained them in the use of radios, code language, military language, etc., etc., and of course trained them as Marines. And they were sent to the Pacific Theater of War, where they were used as radio operators. And of course, the Japanese didn't have a clue how to interpret uh, uh, what the, the, the American messages. Um, I'm not sure why the display is inside a Burger King. I can only imagine that the relative, the owners of it must be relatives or descendants of one of the original code talkers. But I'm at the edge of Monument Valley at the moment, and uh, this is code talker. This is Navajo Indian territory. You can see uh, on the Burger King sign. There's a, they advertise the exhibit about the code talkers. And unlike a lot of the states, supermarkets, etc., in Indian territory, uh, there's a, what they call a mask mandate. In other words, if you go inside, masks are mandatory. And they, they really mean it. You go inside, everyone is wearing a mask. I think that originally they were pretty hard hit by the COVID pandemic. So, sometimes I think that the reason I have such a clean mind is that I change it so often. Today was going to be just a travel day, but today and tomorrow to get to the Grand Canyon. But it's more driving, than I've, it's more distance than I'm comfortable in doing in one day. So I split it over two, but it leaves me a lot of free time. So when I was in the town, Earlier I thought, let's see what there is in the area. And what there is in the area is Monument Valley State Park. It's Indian tribal land, but it has a particularly famous hike in the desert called the Wildcat Route or Loop, which I, and it's gonna take me through some pretty impressive desert scenery. I think it's 3.2 or 3.4 miles or something like that. And although everything here is dry as dust, I think this has to be 
the perfect time to tour here, to hike here, because it's cool. It must be about 13, 14 degrees, and there's a little bit of a breeze blowing, which is awesome. Really very cool walking here through the desert. Even in Israel I enjoy hiking through the Negev. And the Negev is open space, but it's nothing compared to the open spaces we get here. It's really weird how that structure is eroded like that. Really is amazing. The trail has descended a little bit. In the meantime, at least, it's following this dry uh, riverbed. Um, it's a pretty good trail. The one thing I don't like about it is that for a significant part of the time, you're walking through soft sand. And while that's gentle on the knees and ankles, it is more tiring. But it's not a long hike, and it's definitely worth doing. I think the route is going to take me around the structure, which is very cool. See it from all different angles. In the meantime, just follow the trail. This structure, or this type of structure, is called a butt, B-U-T-T. -T. What's interesting is this one, and that one, which are called the East and West Butts, B-U-T-T-E-S, are almost mirror images of each other. Really weird that in nature, there are these two structures developing independently, or being eroded independently, in almost exactly the same way. That one over there, if I could get out of zoom, is a little bit different. Here's the wash running through the valley with a little warning here and while we're on the subject of safety I must say it is nice not having to carry bear spray in the more southern areas of the United States uh, there's not much point to it it really wouldn't be much use against the rattlesnakes and mountain lions that you get in this area. Now that was a great hike. The view out there, it was quiet. I saw a couple of people at the beginning of the hike and after that nobody. Uh, as you can see I'm back at the van now. It turned into a 4.5 mile hike. I mean even from the van here. Yeah. The views out over the desert are just amazing. Coming to this park was out of the way a little bit. It added maybe a total of 50 miles to my journey, but it's well worth it, well worth it. Good morning. I've just arrived at the Grand Canyon. And one thing I remember from being here in 1989 was the absolutely vast scale of the place. And here, I'm getting my first glimpse of that. It is unbelievable how massive this place is. Just incredible. And down below, um, you can't actually see it from here. But way down below there is the Colorado River. One thing's for sure is I will not be hiking to the bottom of this and back up again. That's for sure. On average, the canyon is 10 miles across and a mile deep. The river is going up along there, but obviously you can't see it from here. You can, actually, you can see it lower down. Let me zoom in to see if I can catch it for you. 
there we go. That's the Colorado River down there. On average, it's 300 yards wide. Sorry, 300 feet wide. That is the same river that I went rafting on way further upstream at Glen Canyon. This is something very interesting. It's called a reflectoscope. It's a black mirror. I'm looking out through the window here. I'm inside a building at the view and there are these black mirrors. They were used by artists to simplify what they were sketching. Uh, it makes the light much more subtle and that allows colors to show more clearly. So they would actually arrange this to reflect what they were viewing and the it would frame the picture and also make the colors more vibrant. Stopped at another viewpoint. Not much needs to be said about a view like this. Wow. So after a short visit to the uh, Grand Canyon National Park, I didn't do any hiking there. I stopped a couple of times as you saw to look at the views. I went to the visitor center to speak to the rangers. There's a store there. I bought a couple of things I needed. And then I came to find my campsite. I wanted to get here early to make sure that I could get a good site. I'm in a national forest less than a mile from the entrance to the national park um, about six miles from the room the visitor center at the room and i've got this site here there is nothing else close to me about a hundred yards down that way there's another site and a few further on there's space across the road but I've got this site here. Nobody else is going to come park behind me or in front of me. I've got a fire pit. I've put my chair out. Obviously, I don't have electricity or anything like that. This is National Forest. You're not allowed to camp in national parks. But with, within, so with certain restrictions, you can camp in national forests and it's free. This is a beautiful site. My water tank's full. My holding tanks are empty. I've got food. I've got everything. It's quiet here. You know, it can always happen that somebody will come across the way there and make a noise. It's a chance you take, but hopefully it won't happen. And then when I go tomorrow, I'm going to leave this chair here. First of all, it's a cheapy chair. It's pretty uncomfortable. I've got another one that's a lot nicer. I won't leave the table, though. And that's a sign to people who come looking for a site that it's in use. And, you know, if it gets stolen, it gets stolen. Um, that way tomorrow I won't need to come back so early. I, I did that today for two reasons. First of all, I've never been, obviously never been here before. I wanted to make sure that yes, there is land available and uh, just to suss out where it is. So I'm really happy with the site and uh, yeah, have a bit of a rest and then do some cooking, editing a video. Life is good. I'll see you in the morning. So RVing is definitely something where you learn as you go along. Uh, I'm going to give you two examples now. Originally, I was in the campsite across the way there. Now, that campsite, that spot, is really close to the road. And the wind is going from where I am now to the campsite. And people would come past, not driving quickly, but it's a dirt road, and they would rust. So I thought this is not on, so I've come to this campsite here. Um, I'm quite a bit further from the road. The dust, when it comes up, yeah, a little bit coming this way, but it's not that serious. Also, here's my the door to my camper. Obviously, this is going to be closed later. The window, which I'm going to leave open because it's not cold tonight, is on the other side. So I won't get nearly as much dust. The other... Th 
oops, excuse the shaking, that I'm quite proud of is, see these leveling blocks under the tires of the RV. It's really important that your RV is as level as possible. I actually bought, brought with me from home a spirit level. Now, there are two reasons for that, three reasons. One, if you've got a table and things like things roll around if it's not level, that's a minor irritation. More importantly, is that the fridge is a propane fridge and works most efficiently when it's when the vehicle is level. More, most important reason is I've got a wet bath, and the floor of the wet bath is not exactly sloping downwards much towards the drain. If your vehicle isn't level, it doesn't drain properly. And that's annoying because then when you walk in to use the restroom after you've taken a shower, um, even an hour or two afterwards, you, you'll have a puddle of water there and then you'll track in dust or dirt or whatever and then you have mud all over the place. So I do two things. I make sure that it's level and I've actually become quite quite good at getting the camper really level. Also after I shower, if there's any water left over, I squeegee it up and then mop it up so that the floor's actually dry. And I manage. Is it the most convenient thing in the world? No, but I, I can definitely get by. Would it have been better if the floor of the shower had been sloping downwards a little bit more towards the drain? Hell yeah. Anyway. This is the type one of the long list of things that I can definitely live with with this camper because it's serving me really well. But if I bought it, I'd be kind of annoyed. So that's it. Some unexpected visitors. Wild horses. Already here, as I start to go down, the view is quite spectacular. As you can see, they are serious about their squiggles here. Okay, I'm done with the squiggles for a while. Uh, still got a way to go, and of course, I'll have to deal with them on the way back. But uh, so far so good. It's nice being in the shade. The view is amazing. At the moment it's, it's going to reach 20 degrees today but at the moment it's only around 8 or 9. So when you're exerting yourself hiking that's really nice. Also there's no wind so there's no wind chill factor. Only chill factor here is the view. Wow. A while now the path's been pretty level all the time with this spectacular view ahead of me. Just come around a corner to this view of the canyon and I think that down there where those people are, that is the end point. That's U-R point. Yep, here is confirmation. I'm going to pan around. It definitely is an U-R moment. Well, this hike was downhill all the way to the viewpoint, which means it's uphill all the way back. The good thing about doing it early morning, as I said, is I'm in the shade. I can't imagine doing this hike in the desert in the heat of summer. It would be 
just terrific. I mean, I've got a great view, but I'm not sure it would be worth doing in the heat of summer. I have to get all the way up there. Yikes. See the people in the squiggles there? That's a lot of back and forth to get to the top. And that's going to be me in a couple of minutes. Okay, I got out of the squiggles in one piece. I took the shuttle bus. But, um, in the park, all over the main uh, routes, there are shuttle buses. I took it back to the visitor center where I left my vehicle. I rested, had something to drink and eat, and caught the, tra the bus back here to the end of my first hike. What I'm going to do now is a hike that is quite a bit longer, but is flat. And this is a hike all along behind me the rim of the uh, of the canyon um, so I'm gonna have should have a, an amazing view the entire direction the entire walk I'll switch and not only that I believe the entire route is also wheelchair accessible and uh, paved so I'm not even wearing hiking boots just good sneakers Okay, let's get going. Elk grazing here at the start of the trail. Originally, my view is obstructed by trees. But most of the time, this is the view I have. It's a great walk. And it's paved the whole way. Which makes a nice change after the first hike this morning with all the squiggles it's so cool walking along with this view here just brilliant also on the other side there are quite a few trees so a lot of the time I was, I'm in the shade and I started this hike about 15 minutes ago the 17 degrees Celsius. I don't think I could ever get tired of this view. Wow. So I stopped at one more panoramic outlook to take a video because you can never have too much of a good thing. I could sit and watch this view all day. I could end the hike at that overlook, but the room trail carries on further and it's just so easy and such nice weather for walking that I'm just going to carry on. Stopping at these outlooks, even if they're 100, 200 yards apart, is just incredible because the views that you get from each one is different and spectacular. And I love these outlooks where you have a fence which totally negates my fear of heights. I have no problem with this but people stand in areas where there's no fence whatsoever and that just what that cut, cut off as I said it makes me feel ill when people stand on edges with no Barriers. This is this is just amazing. You can see the Colorado River, a little little bit of it down there. That river is 300 feet wide. It's 5,000 feet, I believe, approximately a mile down. So for today. I'm doing something different. I've rented an e-bike 
for I don't know five hours I think it is and going on a trail through the park in a little while I'll be on the rim hopefully not in the crater itself but along the rim I've got a they showed me a route 10 miles out 10 miles back and the spike has it doesn't have a throttle it won't go just by itself uh, you actually have to pedal but it has three different levels of pedal assist which is nice so now let me focus I'm making sure that both wheels go in the same direction break uh, outlook point I hope you can see the trail behind me not the trail the uh, canyon it truly is grand let's see if this works I've got it tucked into my top. By it, I mean the camera. Stop for a bit of a break. I mean, anywhere along the view, along, along the room that you stop, you get these incredible views. And I must say, it's years since I've ridden a bike, but it is fun. trail uh, a place called Hermit's Rest from 1914 you had people coming here from Grand Canyon village uh, they would come here by open coach along the rim it's about a, nine, a 10 mile trip and from here they will be welcomed given refreshments etc and then go down to the by mule uh, a couple of miles on a trail down into the canyon and there they would spend the night at a lodge um, obviously now there's a tarred road etc which I came on and know um, and the next day they would be brought up and the price in 1914 was $18.50 for the stagecoach from Grand Canyon Village to here, the mule ride down, the meals, and the night in the uh, in the canyon in the lodge. Eighteen dollars fifty in 1914 terms is equivalent to about three hundred and fifty dollars today. So it was not cheap. So while I'm at the end point of the trail, before I start making my way back, I'm having some lunch here and. I've made some sandwiches, hot boiled egg, I've got something to drink and a little sugar free cookie for dessert. Um, while I eat lunch, this is my view. The food might not be world class, but the view sure as hell is. The visibility here is quite something for example I can see with a naked eye but I'll zoom in so you can see it over there that is Mount uh, Trumbull it is it is uh, 60 miles away, 97 kilometers 
its visibility of almost a hundred kilometers. Very neat. They do say that on days when visibility is bad, when there are lots of pollutants, uh, it's sometimes limited to about 18 miles, which is kind of sad for people who come here on days like that. Sad in general. Hi. So as you can see, I'm back in my camper. I got the same spot that I've had for the last two nights at the campground. It was I left a, an old chair next to the fire pit, and people saw. Okay, that's a sign that it's taken. If somebody had stolen that chair, so be it. But nobody did. That's by the way the accepted way of showing that you use the site and you're coming back to it. Um, as I was leaving the park today, there was a massive line at the entrance. Now I've been lucky. First of all I normally go in early in the morning. The only uh, park where I've encountered a long line to get in was once at Archers. Uh, that was it. So I've seen everything and done everything that I wanted to do at um, the Grand Canyon National Park. I will be leaving tomorrow morning. I could have stayed another week. It's not, it's not that there are more things I want to do. I don't plan on hiking to the bottom of the canyon or anything like that. But everything that I did, I could have done for longer. Um, but that's the way it is. A uh, good reason to come back someday. So it's been a great visit to this park. I've hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed experiencing it through my video. Thank you for watching. And look forward to posting another video for you. All the best.